Good morning. Good morning, sir. 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 Good morning. It's late joining. You know? It's creating problem all the time. Two minutes more, please. Few seconds left for the twenty five. Yeah, okay. Well, I think uh, uh, we were talking about systems model of organizational function yesterday, and we tried and explain virtually all components of this particular model. Uh, there was some question uh, that was written by somebody saying that compensation is impacted by uh, inflation. Yes, it does. Otherwise, uh, the government of India or any other government would not uh, increase DA twice a year, which is based on the price index. Uh, similarly, even in the private sector, uh, this inflation is absorbed uh, when annual increment is being given to the employees. But we were not concerned with what impacts uh, compensation. We were more concerned with how compensation impacts the HR policy, and they have got to look at it, right? Uh, if you have any question on uh, this particular thing, you may ask me now before I move on to the another topic.
Right. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. 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 we have got to look at the characteristics of uh, these generations <coughs> suppose uh, you would be uh, you know knowing all uh, these faces uh, the bottom ones you know already the first two at least third one is just in uh, uh, from the prime minister of canada the karan thapar everyone knows you also know the british prime minister who is top middle and on the yes, left sir. corner left corner can anybody recognize her yes sir his interview with narendra modi uh no she is she is uh, her, her name her is nana lal clear right? enough chupara okay now indra noi of course uh, you would know all of them yes sir you have indra noi Uh, so that is British Prime Minister on Maya top of Indra Noi. We have the two senior actors, now well, the three senior actors, and of course uh, the economist Prime Minister of India. What is a generation? See, generation is de- defined as the average period between the first one generation and that of the next. that is all people born at the same time living at about the same time is called a generation similarly we also say that a group of people born about the same time who share the same historical experiences beliefs and attitudes uh, is also part of a generation now if you look at that is how we define generation for this particular study if you look at today's workplace it is typical more typical than it was in past and if i'm used allowed to use american parallels we will say that different generations or many generation workers are sitting under the same roof sharing a large number of common facilities yet they are not alike i think you will agree with this statement yes sir totally agree at work yeah at work generational differences can affect everything including recruiting building teams dealing with changes motivating and managing and maintaining and increasing productivity now everything virtually everything gets affected and that is dependent on how people communicate because generation different generations communicate differently and therefore we need to look at this or uh, this communication may lead to clarity but most often it may lead to misunderstandings it may lead to high turnover sometimes uh it may lead to attracting less people and gaining employee commitment uh, as far as these organizations are concerned um uh, now if you look at sir uh, what, uh, yes uh, yes sir i have a question sir on one hand we give preference to the diversity diversity in terms of education in terms of gender in terms of uh, maybe age too because mbas is done by people of different age groups so uh, i know this is not a exactly a generational gap but here we are saying that generation um, uh, affects the um, uh, efficiency too see it does i said it is the communication style which affects the production yes sir communication style if it is not positive mm-hmm. if you have not chalked out a positive strategy mm-hmm. it will work negatively as we progress you will understand that 
right so sir it all um, uh, sum up to how you plan and how you organize see in the beginning we said we are studying generations as a as an hr strategy yes sir right? yes sir hr people have got to formulate strategy therefore we are trying to find out what are different generations yes sir. we are trying to give a solution that is what we are trying to do my dear okay yes sir right uh, if you look at a different generations that is listed here uh, in the pink uh, band we say there are veterans there are baby boomers this is the american uh, classification because in india we have not yet classified it uh, we have generation x and we have generation y uh, there are different generations uh, uh, you know preceding y we call nexters and millennials and so on and so forth so if you look at the core values of different generations we find that the veterans had respect for authority they were conformers and highly disciplined uh, whereas baby boomers who are optimistic and highly involved kind of people generation x or xers as we say were skeptical but they were fun loving and informal whereas the newer generation is believing more in realism they are highly confident extreme fun loving and they are sociable as well but in terms of family values uh, the veterans were having traditional or nuclear family uh, that they started with uh, for baby boomers you know family started disintegrating to some extent uh, for generation x we say uh, they started believing since it was a nuclear family so latchkey kids and for generation y we're talking about merged families merged families in terms of you know in the locale we have got facility like crash and other things and there are some people who are taking care of the children of everybody in terms of education it was not available so much uh, to the veterans so it was a dream for them for baby boomers it gave a bright light for generation x it was a way to get you know to a higher positions and for generation y we're talking about it is an incredible experience with the variety of educations that is available today in terms of communication uh, the veterans talked about rotary telephones that is the telephone that we were talking about earlier one to one communication was very common and they usually wrote memos uh, if they wanted to call someone uh, baby boomers started looking at touch phones call me any time kind of a scenario came up but generation x started experiencing cell phones and the present generation has got all kinds of communication gadgets available starting with internet picture phones emails etc etc in terms of dealing with money we say put it away pay cash because checks were not uh, there for veterans uh, baby boomers talked about buy now and pay later so they started taking credits using credit cards generation x were cautious conservative and saving became very common with them because inflation increased tremendously and for the present generation they say we are earning to spend and the salary levels are higher uh, if you look at that was the family characteristics but if you our personal characteristic if you look at the workplace characteristics we find that we have got work ethics as one of the characteristics uh, we have got leadership style as another interactive cycle style as another communications as another feedback and rewards message and motivate that motivates and work and family orientation that is there now if you look at these characteristics uh, we i'll just uh, go to the communication and leaving out the others that you can uh, get when you get the transparency see we said that 
even in the personal characteristics, they were writing memos. So work place characteristics is memo based. And for baby boomers, it is in person. For generation X, it is direct and immediate. And for generation Y and the present generation, it is email, voicemail, so on and so forth. In terms of leadership style, you look at directive, command and control was there. An exciting adventure because the leadership, different leadership styles have started developing during this particular period for this generation. Everyone is the same that generation X feels, so difference of age was not there. And for the generation Y, they are yet to reach the top of management ladders, or some of them have reached uh, that ladder because veterans have gone out, so they have uh, taken the places. Uh, message that motivates uh, is your experience is respected. That is what the, ex uh, the veterans expected to listen. Uh, the baby boomers wanted to listen, you are needed, and the Xers do it your way, forget the rules. So it was, you know, experimentation that found way uh, in the this particular sector. And the generation Y, of course, you will work with other bright people uh, is what we find. So what we look at is that there are importance of generations. There are variety of things that help, that help, please switch off the mic, please. There are a variety of things that help shape our values, who we are, including parents, neighborhood, and friends. This is what the organization believes, right? Uh, the historical events also impact individuals and generations, and Differences in generation can create conflict inside the home as well as at the workplace. And therefore, at home, uh, sometimes we do not agree uh, with our parents. And usually, uh, that leads to conflict. Even among the siblings, if the age level is different, we don't tend to agree because we always say, Aap log old fashioned hai. Aapko kuch nahi malum hai new generation ke baare mein. Also, so there is a gap of uh, thought process. So that also leads to conflict occurring between the two generations. Yes, 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 it is. L let us see how it gets shaped first. Uh, values that we develop when we are young influence what we believe as adults, right? And therefore, organizations believe that gentlemen uh, are not created by the organizations gentleman is created by the families how a person is being brought up that is reflected in the total personality at the outset therefore what we find that the development of values is through observing through modeling through socialization and there are scientific methods to observe it uh, now we know that these people belong to the same generations now, veterans, if you look at the values, we said they were hardworking. They believed in creating organizations. So they followed organizational hierarchy. Uh, they followed tradition. They were always talking, say, saying that, you know, be logical in your explanations. They believed in family values, as we said. Their honor was very important to them. They respected authority. They were respected consistency and uniformity in the performance and other thing. And discipline was very, very important for them. Uh, we also find that their heroes that I have listed, some of them you may not agree because this is the subcontinental uh, heroes that we have explained. Now you may add some more if you want. It is just, you know, indicative. Cultural icons would be different kinds of poets or that is there, and the fashion uh, would be conservative coats, ties, nylons, neatly trimmed hair, and so on and so forth. Now, if you go to boomers, they are called baby boomers sometimes. They 
Their values were fairness, optimism, team orientation, personal growth, personal gratification, service, family, personal approach, youth, work ethics, involvement, consensual leadership, recognition of achievements. The attributes were pre-assess and post-us, passionate about causes, believe in growth and expansion, think of ourselves as stars of the show, and they were highly optimistic kind of people. But they were team workers. They believe in personal gratification, that is the marriage and jobs. Personal growth was important for them. They were trying to look young and cool and like respect, but not with sir or ma'am. They would like to be called by their first names. They were economically optimistic, driven by competition and material rewards. They were hardworking and focused on big pictures. Assets of boomers were service oriented. They were, you know, self-driven, willing to go extra miles. So they always uh, talked about, they were the ones who brought in the culture of late working in the organizations. And they were highly hardworking, good at relationships. They wanted to please people and they were team players, they were not individuals. Uh, the liabilities, as far as boomers were concerned, they were not budget minded, so they spent quite a bit. Uh, they were uncomfortable with personal conflict. Process was very important for them. They believed that if you follow the right kind of process, the results will be there automatically. Uh, so they were overly sensitive about feedback each time uh, they created feedback system and they were self-centered mostly judgmental of those who see things differently, they did not like them. Now, if you look at generation X, that is the post boomers that we're talking about, uh, excess values were diversity, self-reliance, they questioned authority, they thought of globalization and think globally, they talked about work-life balance, they were techno-literates, because if somebody was not techno-literate, they were not somebody who would be called fully literate. They were fun loving, so they went on tours, spent good kind of a weekend, uh, you know, vacations and so on and so forth. Informality was a part of their doing, and they were highly pragmatic uh, in their approach. They believed in family orientation, and they started, you know, leaving the job and joining entrepreneurship at an early age. Some of them started in the beginning as well. Uh, they were self-reliant with absent parents, seek to create family bond with friends. They believed in work-life balance, as we said, non-traditional sense of time and space, and they were informal and casual with regard to authority. Uh, is skeptical, attracted to edge, extreme sports, techno savvy, great at multitasking, encouraged as children to challenge others thinking willing to work hard but do not take advantage of them that is what they had the exes were also date conscious that is they were usually married late they wanted to be their own boss they believed uh, in the dual family system and they started entrepreneurship rather than looking at the jobs that they would look at now, helping people one on one or volunteering more effective than civic interaction and tough and practical that they talked about. Their asset was they were highly adaptable, techno literate, independent, unintimidated by authority, and they were creative. So, creativity became very, very important for them. And this is the time when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, the culture in the organization that came up as the as we progress now the liabilities were impatient poor people skill inexperienced and cynical as we talk about now the last generation that is net generation or millennials nintendos or whatever we call them uh, so we are talking about the young people uh, who are there smartest that's what they feel cleverest of course all of you feel like that 
they, are, they feel that they are much wanted, the people care for them. They were over-programmed kind of a behavior is there. Barriers of time and space has dissolved because they want everything on their fingertips. Willing to work and learn, highly optimistic. Uh, they were highly confident. Achievement is important for them. They are highly sociable. Uh, morality uh, is there. A street is smart. That is what they call themselves. They believe in diversity. Challenges, haves and have nots, that is there. Want to correct for the impracticality of the booms and undis undisciplined of itself. They are virtuous, defined by self. Develop community based norms that is there, standards and rules, responsibility to others. They talk about empower groups, not individuals. So, what we talk about is workers' empowerment. Within that, we talk about female empowerment, so on and so forth. They, uh, you know, liked, uh, we call, also call them high school musicals in American parallels. Expect non-stop interaction with their peer group and more interdependence, that is personal, social, economic, with their parents. Uh, assets are collective action, optimism, tenacity, heroic spirit, multitasking, and techno-savvy. Liabilities are need for supervision, inexperience, likely to be demanding workforce, clear picture of how it should be and used to get what they are. Now, strategies for service. Always remember that communication is often initiated and received through generational filters. We only you know, care and listen to things that we want to listen, others we do not. Keep in mind preferred communication style that is individual and generational. If possible, an appropriate combined generations based on type of project and generational disposition, if be flexible. Recognize that frustration may be caused by communication differences in addition to the event itself and enjoy the variety presented to you as you service, if you are a service provider, that is what we talk about. So what we find is that if you do not know different characteristics of different generations, you will not be able to really care for that, respect the sentiment of others, respect what age they are, and accordingly communicate in their way if you really want to make them work. Otherwise, as we said, it is received through generational filters. We try and listen to things that we want to listen, other things we normally do not. Now, once you go through generation, uh, you know, as to how to manage different generations at workplace, uh, let us go back to the concept of 3C uh, that I was trying to tell you in the beginning. We said, we talk about when the HR is there. Hello? Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
because organizations say that once you are onboarded uh, in the organization, so we said that in the beginning, if you would remember the definition that we're trying, you were trying to do with the expressed function of HR, right? Uh, do you remember we said we are talking about procurement, development, compensation, and what was the yes, next sir, one? Yes, integration. integration and maintenance. Right. So for the purpose yes. of integration, we tried and do away with all those exceptions, right? If they were not integrating, they would not be part of the organization anymore. Right? So we have already planned okay, okay. to integrate those people. In the okay. Okay, okay. Sir, I have a question. Yes, sure. Sir, uh, Generation X or Baby Boomers, if you look at the age gap, there is no difference in the age gap. I mean, Generation X is 40 years old, Baby Boomers is 40 years old. No, no, it's like that. If you, uh, you know, study uh, people as to when do they get, when do they want more, or when do actually they sometimes slow down in their career, who are the persons who are not getting promotions? So most frustrated uh, people in the organization, uh, mostly, would be the age group of 40s. Because that is where they have, they feel that they have armed themselves with everything, but a space at the top of the organization is very, very small. The pyramid that we talk about, the organizational pyramid, if you look at organization is always like a pyramid where there is more space at the bottom, but there is less space at the top. So normally people get struck at the middle and therefore maximum uh, effort is needed to keep this group motivated, to keep this group you know, productive because they are the ones who are the, uh, who are going to contribute with all experiences of theirs and they are the ones who normally get frustrated in the organizations right so gap uh, as such there will be overlapping as well there were some people uh, who would be overlapping as far as the generations are concerned so there is nothing like the, the differences uh, we said there are 10 years of uh, difference is there but five plus five minus will have somewhat similar kind of a characteristics right but since we had to divide them in a different generations, therefore we did this kind of an act. So most organizations uh, would devise methods uh, for this particular generation who are in their 40s, as we said, so that they are kept productive. They are given lateral movements. They are given more responsibility. Job enrichment is done for uh, this kind of a people that we talk about. Right? You get it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, any any other question that you have? Any other question you have? All right, so I'll uh, move to the concept of three C's that I'll not cover from the transparency. Uh, we said that the concept of three C uh, is, we said competence building, we said commitment building, and we said it is culture building in the organization. Uh, what is competence, by the way? Can anybody answer? What is competence? Ability to get along. Adil, Adil Masood. Yeah. So ability to do something, uh, but like success. To, ability to do something which may lead to success. Good, good. Adam, ability Adam, to ah. okay, Arma. Ability, yes, sir. ability to uh, deliver. Uh, if any job is given to you, you have to be competent in a way that you are able to perform that job properly. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, mm -hmm. maybe uh, to do a job more productively and efficiently. Right. What else? Sir, doing something better than others. That is what you feel it is competence, is it? Sir, carrying capacity. So it is basically. Yes, sir, carrying capacity. Combining capacity. Carrying capacity. Yes, 
having a skill that is required to succeed in a particular job combining the technical skills with the theoretical ones mm, okay good so having necessary skills ability that make you efficient in a job the capability see uh, what we uh, now i think you have got so many ideas uh, i'll tell you one thing uh, that So can we include soft skills in it, like communication? So see, competence to me, competence to me, uh, is a relative term. It is not an absolute term. This is first thing that you must remember. Competence is a relative term. It is not an absolute term. Number one. number 2 competence is ability to perform the given job for which you are appointed right yes sir competence is ability of an individual to perform the job for which they are appointed or for which they are designated right so competence as we said first thing it is not is a relative term it is not an absolute term and second it is the ability of the individual to perform the job in question so for a particular job that you are appointed if you are not able to do then you will not be considered as competent please switch off your mic uh you will not be considered as competent so competency is always related to job in question or it is related to the variables uh, which is in question not that competency means a person can do everything therefore what we find that competency is always related to a job in question that you are supposed to do so an engineer an electrical engineer would be well versed in the electrical engineering matters but if you give them the job of a mechanical engineer or an automobile engineering he will not be considered competent for automobile engineering because he or she has not been trained has not been you know developed uh, for the job of automotive engineer or similarly a management graduate of a particular area uh, would be say well versed in the area of finance if he is trained to do finance but in other area he may not be that competent he may be having little knowledge but he may not be that competent so the organizations when we talk about they take competency as related to the job for which they are appointing people and they want to know if such traits can be learned by people fast and then they practice that out at the organization level right and this is what most organization not most all organization would like to do that they would like to identify talent which can be translated into competence building in the organization and they build competence to deliver goods in the organization and that is what the organization would do as an hr you know individual the second thing that we said uh, is the second c the second c pertains to commitment building commitment is related to the behavior of individual right this behavior that we talk about uh, can be a negative behavior it can be a positive behavior or it can be an indifferent behavior behavior may be positive in the beginning but it may change over a period of time or it can be adverse in the beginning it can become positive later on so all those things are there if we leave it to the individuals now what organizations would like to do is that they would like to mold that behavior they would like to see that behavior of individuals are positive as we all know that this behavioral molding is not something that is done in the japanese management system 
they they consider work as their religion and therefore finding right people would be difficult in the japanese society because number of people are less whereas once you find an individual uh, behavior is to overproduce if they want to punish uh, their employer but if in india we want to punish our employer what do we do we don't produce we go on a strike we go on lockouts we go on slow down we go on pen down we break the machineries and create all kinds kinds of resistance in the organization now therefore once you get people in the organization the second thing that they have got to do is to apart from competence building we would like to do commitment building that is committed the person has to be committed to their own career first now once you become committed to your own career that the organization would like to emphasize through your career planning process they also want that this commitment should be to the organization and if that commitment is not developed then organization will Uh, for a change uh, in the attitude of the individual we talk about knowledge acquiring knowledge acquiring skill and behavior that is called attitude structuring that, that is being done in training so the that is knowledge skill and attitude that is there uh, you no know, hr people also use the ksa as key responsibility areas but here ksa means knowledge skill and attitude right so the third component uh, that we look at uh, is basically the component of culture now culture as we said uh, uh, is something that every organization would like to have their own culture so any type of organization there would be culture culture of centralization there would be culture of decentralization there would be culture of matrix structure culture but what is common that we are looking at is that there has to be an octopus culture now the first element of octopus is openness that is an individual in the organization should not be fearful of talking to their bosses talking to their peer group talking to their subordinates if there is any question that is there they must ask those questions because if openness is not there you will be fearful of asking question because you may be reprimanded you may be laughed at that is not the culture that we are looking at a culture an open culture is where you are free to ask questions free to question uh, things that is there in the organization then the second element which says is octa right with that is collaboration now the organization itself says that you know without collaboration you are not going to succeed therefore you must seek collaboration and you must work in collaboration you must work in team that is there and this collaboration culture is very very important that you must work you must learn how to work with others not that individually you are saying you are brilliant worker but in a group you cannot work that cannot happen because organization is not made up of functional silos this is a total system that is there and in that collaboration is very very important what is the third he says octa t t is for trust now if you do not trust your fellow worker if you do not trust your boss or do you do not trust your subordinate will you still talk in the organization if you feel that if you say something to somebody they are going to spill the beans uh, you will never talk to them and therefore you must have total trust in the individual that is there that trust has to be built 
that if I am, I'm discussing anything and this trust is taken so much that even when we do a performance appraisal, we do not disclose the performance of one individual with another. If there is any weakness, we will not disclose anyway. We will only discuss that with the individuals and that is done with the trust, the concept of trust that is there. Then we also have another term called A octa, that is autonomy. Now what we find that autonomy Autonomy is a positive term. Everybody wants that they should have autonomy. But it also stands for accountability. So this A is for two terms, autonomy and accountability, and both are going hand in hand. It is not that you will have autonomy and you will not have accountability. You should get all these, you know, a credit for contributing more, but at the same time, if there is anything wrong, you must also take responsibilities for it. That is important as far as the concept of autonomy is concerned. Then we have got second part called PACE, P-A-C-E. P stands for proactivity. Uh, proactivity is making things happen rather than letting things happen. So you are the one who is a driver, who drives themselves, who has got a steering in, in their hands. Uh, the kind of people who are reactive in their approach, the opposite or proactive, uh, is somebody who reacts only when the things has already happened. Now, reactive people do not go very far in the organization. It is always the proactive people who take initiatives, who take challenges, who feel that they can do it. They prepare themselves in advance, and therefore that culture of proactivity will be promoted in the organization. In fact, when the people are recruited in the organization, this one of the tests that if the person is proactive is uh, being given to them because reactive people is not liked by this organization. The next A stands for authenticity. What you say and what you mean should be the same thing. You should say what you mean and you should mean what you say, not like you say something else and you mean something else. That should not be there that culture is also promoted in the organization. The last two terms are experimentation. C stands for confrontation. This confrontation is not a negative term. It is questioning, basically, they're talking about. You should question yourself before you do anything. What am I going to get? As a result, is it going to contribute positively to the organization? Is it that going to benefit society? Is it that I can do well? What kind of input is needed? So you must question yourself first before questioning any method, any system that is there in the organization, which we call as confrontation. Uh, this term E was added later on. It was not there earlier. It was known as octopack culture. E was added experimentation. If you do not experiment, you will not go very far. And this creativity will not find a place in the organization if experimentation is not there. And therefore, everybody is free to experiment. Otherwise, newer methods will not be born in the organization. Therefore, HR always concentrate on all the three Cs at the same time. Thank you very much. If you have any question, please ask before I stop. Any question, please? Oh.